Maria, thanks for joining us. Sorry we had some difficulty in connecting. Uh, oh, think- in summary, I said that you were the, you were the, not necessarily the first, who knows when these beasts began uh, their, uh, their, their uh, satanic uh, activities, but you were, I think, the first person with a profile uh, that was able to uh, report what happened to you to the authorities with a chance of being believed. I think you know what I mean by that. Yes. Uh, tell the viewers, if you would, uh, what happened to you and what happened to the report that you made. Okay, I would love to. First of all, I want to thank you, George, because I know you've asked me to come on a couple times and I've been sick. And I really um, jumped at the chance when you contacted the other day, when you contacted George Tonks, another Wexner survivor. And um, we're very grateful that you reached out. Um, so, yes, I re- I'm the, not the first victim at all. I'm just the first person ever to make this report to the FBI about this particular group. And I call it an international pedophile ring because it was. And I also, um, you know, I think they're heavily involved with intelligence. And I believe they're also, um, well, my report has been stuffed away. Let me put it this way. I refiled a report in 1996 following Ghislaine Maxwell threatening my life. Just prior to that, I had been kidnapped and held captive at Leslie Wexner's home in New Albany, Ohio. And I was held there for Ghislaine and Jeffrey to assault me and transport my sister to Thailand. And um, I didn't even know my sister was going to have any contact with them. And so that's why I was sequestered away so that I wouldn't be mindful or watching. And basically after I returned to New York, after escaping being held captive by a man named Randy Bowie, who when he introduced himself to me actually at the Wexner estate in in New Albany, Ohio, he said, hi, I'm Randy Bowie. I'm um, a sharpshooter. I'm retired special forces. And he was about 26, maybe 28. So he was already retired. And he said, and um, I'm Les Wexner's right hand man here. And, you know, uh, you're never to go outside again this summer. So don't go outside. And if you're going to go outside, you have to call either Abigail Wexner, the lady of the house, or you're going to, um, you know, not face good, good circumstances. So it was really stressful. So I had returned home and I had spent about a month with family. And so when I returned home, it was kind of amazing that they um, ended up, I ended up walking into my apartment and there is a phone call from Ghislaine Maxwell. She's calling, which means she must have called all all that time, either like two two to three weeks. I don't know exactly. Um, What people need to know is this was in 1996, right? So I had never... I I had been in graduate school. I had never heard of people being kidnapped or anything like this. I just needed a job as an artist. And so I just didn't know that these things happened. (laughs) And I went to the NYPD because the night I rolled into town in New York in my rider truck, I pulled up to my apartment and Jeffrey Epstein had had um, one of his butler's sons, Juan Lessie's son, living in there. And so all my stuff was gone, and he painted the whole place black. <laughs> and so I walk into this black apartment, and the phone's ringing. And it was Gilan, And I was terrified. And she said, Maria, I'm going to burn your home, your life. Your career's already burned. Your family's going to burn. Your friends are going to burn. And we're going to burn all of your art. I hung, up, I hung up the phone and I went to the NYPD and these men knew me. They were very um, honorable men, these men that I knew from NYPD. Um, they were good men that some of them had given their lives, you know, in nine, on 9-11. And um, so this was this is the sixth precinct in Manhattan. Those were good guys. And so they knew me because... Um, I had, you know, met them before. And so they knew I wasn't crazy. And so I walk in there and 
they said, Marie, this is the craziest story we've ever heard. Because I began telling them everything about Jeffrey Epstein. Now, remember, no one had ever heard of him, right? I began telling them everything about this woman, Ghislaine Maxwell, and the royals, and the, you know, the people, all the Israeli dignitaries, and Alan Dershowitz, and Bill Clinton. And, you know, I'm just going on and on telling them, um, Donald Trump, like literally all the people involved, I named them. And it just, yeah, it didn't get anywhere in 1996 because the NYPD said, Maria, this isn't in our jurisdiction. You're going to need to go to the FBI. The only thing that we can take care of in your jurisdiction right now is this threat of arson. This is a serious threat of physical harm and violence against your property and you're in a, an apartment building. So that's violence against everyone. So we're going to mark that down. But the rest, you have to call the FBI. So I told them, I called the FBI. And did you? I did. I called um, them. How did they react, Maria? Well, when I called them, this is what I said, because I was just trying to be really honest. And I want to give a backstory about this. I, I lived in New York for a long time. And, and New Yorkers explain everything like, you know, in sections like Little Italy, Harlem, everything's like divided up. And with that, you learn pretty quickly that there used to be in the 90s, all these mafias. Like I worked in a restaurant in Soho and the Chinese mafia owned it. <laughs> and so there were different mafias in New York and uh, there were the Italians, you know, and this one was the Jewish mafia. And that's just all it was, this specific group. And I said, um, I'm calling to report the Jewish mafia. And they said, what do you mean? And I said, what do you mean? What do I mean? They're, they're Jewish and they're, they're mobsters. And, and they said, how do you know? And I said, wait a minute. Do you have a file on Leslie Wexner? And they didn't. He, he said yes. I know he answered in the affirmative because I asked how big it was because I was so naive. So they, they didn't help at all. They, did, they weren't helpful. But flash forward 10 years later, I'm in a, uh, hiding, and I'll explain that. But I was in hiding in the middle of the woods of North Carolina. And I get a knock on the door, and it's this gorgeous, tremendous FBI agent. And, and uh, this man that's like, they were beautiful people. It was weird. Her name was Nesbitt Kirkadol. And she called and said, listen, Maria, um, this uh situation i said is this about my student loans when i saw their batches because i haven't been able to make money and <laughs> so we're like no this isn't about your student loans this is about your 1996 fbi report maria and it's serious and we need to come in and i sat them down and served them orange juice and cookies i didn't have anything <laughs> i was like i'm so sorry i don't know what to serve the fbi like i, I didn't even understand what was going on and this woman, Nesbitt, she really wanted to solve this case with Epstein. The problem is it was never about Epstein, but we'll get to that because he was given a sweetheart deal. And so the FBI forgot to inform everyone. Like I was supposed to be testifying in a federal trial in Florida and so was Annie. And we were on hold, you know, and um, Annie was in graduate school and I was in hiding and we were on hold and about Eight, and I was dying. I had two cancers and I didn't have the money to pay for it. And then a really amazing man. And I'm going to say this really fast because this man just wrote a book on this story. And if you want to know the real story of Jeffrey Epstein, folks, please make sure it was either written by one of the lawyers involved, a PI that's involved, or one of the survivors because the other ones are really full of it. And, and that's my opinion. I'm, I'm entitled to it. But I've just read some things that I'm like, what is that? That's not accurate. You know, there's a lot of misinformation out there. And there's a lot of people trying to cover up what actually is the deal. And the deal I reported was I reported Leslie Wexner as the head of the snake of this particular organization. And it was just based on what I'd seen and my life being threatened by Randy Bowie. Being, you know, being held captive is just a very bizarre thing. I was in my 20s. I was an artist doing very well, studying under Eric Fischel and Chuck Close. So I had a really great existence, right? And then this happened. And right when this happened, everything changed. And I knew when I made that call to the FBI that I was giving up my art career. I knew it, right? But 
it was sort of given back to me recently and then taken away again. And, and, and I'm called names, you know, like bad names because by Alan Dershowitz, because I told the truth. That's all I did. I just told the truth, you know? So this FBI agent who sounds like Nesbitt. he just walked off uh, a television uh, series, Nesbitt, uh, yes. she said that we want to get to the bottom of this. Did she mean it? Did yes, she, she succeed in that? No. So all these years, she did mean it. She had little girls and she really wanted it to happen and she cried to me and she was not an actress. This woman had dedicated her life to this case. She couldn't believe what we'd been through. I need to tell you that while this was happening, Alan Dershowitz hired in the private sector, the former FBI director of the United States to find dirt on us. They found one girl that had like weed in, in high school. You know, I mean, are you kidding? That's what the F former, now that's the man, Louis Free is his name, F-R-E-E-H. That man is the man that was head of the FBI when I made my very specific report outlining everyone I named in the beginning of the program. And I told them why I was naming them. And so for about 14 years now, Jim Hill of ABC News has been trying to get my FOIA request met. He was only able to get the second one heavily redacted, but Nesbitt wanted to solve it. But this year, I saw where she signed off on the agreement. And now no one can find her like Brad Edwards. Okay. He's a hero attorney. I'm not kidding you. He's the reason this whole thing happened. If it weren't for Brad Edwards and Virginia Roberts, David Boyce and me, those people wouldn't have gone to jail. And I'm not bragging for me. I'm saying those are the main players. Okay. And, and that Virginia fought yeah. by her. Of course, uh, they, they went to jail, but one of them escaped justice by rather surprisingly, especially to him, uh, yeah. committing suicide. And the other uh, is not yet sentenced. And we don't know if she will, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, will pay the proper price for her crime. That's but here's my question, Maria. Yes. Uh, what about all the others? We can't uh, allow this case yeah. to be boiled down to the deceased Jeffrey Epstein and the conveniently imprisoned Ghislaine Maxwell. Thank what about you. all these others? Yeah. So thank you for bringing that up because it's interesting. We have a lot of, um, and the reason I say I'm not the first survivor, obviously, is there have been men and women coming forward that are real. Not there. There's a lot of people pretending, but they're actual. They're in. They're with our lawyers now, and they're real survivors. And so that gives us hope because they're not going to let this case die either. And there were several of us that understand that Wexner was in charge of Epstein, and and Wexner was also in charge. Why would you own the CIA airline? And why does all human trafficking in America begin and end in Ohio? And why does George, why was George Chonks trafficked out of Chicago by Leslie Wexner in the 80s? And nobody cares. And I'm going to tell you, George, you're the first person that I can even say this to because I was supposed, ABC drove me, Jim Hill picked me up in Kentucky and drove me all the way to New York. And, and that doesn't happen. He's producer of a major show. And, and they got on the phone with me and they said, what's the first thing you're going to say, Maria? And I said, I'm going to put on my T-shirt that says, I know Victoria's Secret. And I'm going to talk about how Wexner was Epstein's boss and how Wexner was Elan's boss. And um, because they told me, that's how I know. And they said, we're hanging up, hang up the phone right now. I, hand the phone to Jim. We're done. You're not going on the show. And we'd driven all the way to New York. Yeah. So um, every, all the major networks in this order have said to me, he's too dangerous. We will be sued the whole time. Um, we can't mention Wexner. He has to be edited out. The clicks will be removed. Um, it'll be, the video will be taken down. You know, there's always an excuse. And that brings me to what's going on in America right now, which is Disney. Um, Disney, Hulu just is doing um, what I believe is a cover-up story on, on Les Wexner. And the reason I believe that is they refuse to dig into the fact that he raped little boys in the 80s in Chicago and beyond. And nobody will talk about it. You know, they just want this narrative that Jeffrey Epstein, he's the bad guy. 
and he's dead now. How convenient. And his lawyer, his, his, yeah, his death is uh, convenient. His death <laughs> is convenient. I, I, I need to make the point that neither Dershowitz nor Wexner are here to answer the very serious yeah. allegations that you are making. Uh, I'm not in a position to speak for them or to defend them, but it is obvious that uh, we uh, would welcome a statement from them, uh, an interview with them uh, to face the allegations that you have made. Just yeah. uh, finally, because we're almost out of time, Maria, do you believe that Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide? No, I do not. I do not. And um, I believe that he was murdered by, by uh, probably Tartaglioni. Tartaglioni is being um, represented by Ghislaine Maxwell's attorney. It's like there's only one attorney left in the United States or in all of New York. And the SDNY is very corrupt. So these are, this is a cover up and Wexner, I mean, I'm sorry, Epstein is, is the scapegoat in my opinion. And all the people who went to that island that raped children, not one of them has been arrested, not one. No, that's right, not one. Not one of the people who were inexplicably attracted to Jeffrey Epstein and his, uh, his shitty little island uh, have been arrested. Maria Farmer, I wish we had more time. Maybe we will uh, visit this case again, perhaps when Ghislaine Maxwell's sentence is known. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on the mother of all talk shows.